Hello students, welcome you all. In NMR spectroscopy, today I will tell about the type of solvent and type of internal standard used. So, uh, to record the NMR spectra of any sample, uh, we need some solvent and a few drop of uh, internal standard uh, that is called as the tetramethylene is added to it. So, what type of solvent should be used? So, type of solvent. So, some of the characteristic of solvent. One thing, the solvent uh, that should uh, be completely inert or it should not react with the sample. So, it should be inert or should not get react with the sample. Second property that the sample should be completely dissolved in the solvent or we can say the sample uh, should be completely miscible with the solvent. So, sample should be completely dissolved. in solvent A and next that is uh, that is uh, the solvent that should be free from the proton or it should not have any hydrogen because here we are concerned with the uh, proton NMR spectra and if the solvent also contains some proton then it will show its own peak also. So, we need the peak of only the sample. We don't, uh, we should not have the peak of a solvent. So, that's why the sample should be, the solvent should be free from proton. This is one of the important uh, feature that it should have. So, solvent should be free from proton okay so what kind of solvent for example we may have uh, uh, suppose if i am writing chloroform whether this solvent can be used no it cannot be used because it is having the proton it is having the hydrogen so it cannot be used to record the nmr spectra Okay, so we cannot dissolve the sample in a chloroform. So that's why in place of this chloroform, we use CDCl3. CDCl3 that is deuterochloroform or it is called as the chloroform. Okay, so or otherwise, suppose if some of the sample, suppose is not dissolved in a this is CDCl3 then uh, commonly we also use uh, the DMSO D6 DMSO which is called as the deutero uh, dimethyl sulfoxide so suppose this is dimethyl sulfoxide this is the formula for dimethyl sulfoxide but it cannot be used as a solvent for NMR spectra because it is having the this proton so in place of this proton in place of this proton, deutero dimethyl sulfoxide is used. So it is deutero dimethyl sulfoxide. Or we also write it as a, you will see it is written as a DMSO D6. It is also written in this way because it has a, uh, sixth uh, deuterium atom that's why detail, DMSO D6 is also uh, it is written in this way also or otherwise so these are the two main uh, commonly used solvent in which uh, more we, most of the uh, sample are dissolved okay. <clears throat> now so some of the other uh, for example uh, for example we may have uh, C6 D6 now C6 D6 okay this is a and hexadetero benzene it can be used or we may use the
we may use this hexa ituro acetone can also be used so this is or we may write the ituro benzene or it is hexa ituro ben uh, acetone or ituro acetone so these are the solvents that can be used okay now another thing uh, to record the nmr uh, spectra of any sample a drop of internal standard is also added to it first of all sample is dissolved in this solvent it may be dissolved and then a drop of internal standard is also added to it so most uh, the main internal standard that is used it is called as the tetramethyl serine so about the internal standard so first of all why this internal standard is added so why it is added so when we record the nmr spectra of any sample then that sample it contains uh, various different types of uh, proton and uh, all proton will give its own signal all proton will give its own peak so uh, and these peaks are uh, very close to each other the frequency difference between these peaks are very small and uh, we cannot distinguish the frequency difference uh, between the two closer uh, signal so in that case uh, to distinguish to uh, to distinguish the uh, signal okay, to distinguish the signals uh, a standard is added and the signals is then recorded with respect to that uh, standard okay so this here the standard uses a tetramethyl serine is used as a standard and all signals are recorded with respect to this difference or this standard so why the because the frequency difference we can write because the frequency difference between the signals are very small small so to distinguish the signal we record the we or we, we take the uh, we record the signal with respect to internal standard or reference or reference or less tms tms or it is called as a tetramethyl silane tetramethyl silane okay. so this tetramethyl silane the structure if you will see for tetramethyl silane then this is the tetramethyl silane so question is that why this tetramethyl silane is only used why not we can use the uh, some other compound as a reference standard so reason for why we are using reason for this tms one of the thing that this tms if you will see the structure then all the methyl which are connected to the silicon that is the equivalent one 
so all methyls are equivalent and they will on they will give only single signal okay so for one of the reason all methyl group in tms are equivalent and give a single signal single signal and this signal and another uh, thing is that uh, this all protons of these methyl group are highly shielded in comparison to any other compound these protons are highly shielded few exceptions are there otherwise if you uh, compare this compound with any other organic molecule then these methyl groups are highly shielded and they come at the one of the corner at the right corner in the nmr spectrum okay and all the other proton that will resonate left to this so this is the, the main important uh, feature of this that uh, this uh, this uh, tms tms is highly shielded highly shielded in comparison to other compounds or we can see the protons of tms okay the protons of ca tms protons of uh, tms is highly shielded in comparison to in comparison to other compounds and and its signal comes at the right corner right corner of the spectra okay so suppose if this is the spectra and it is the scale this is the scale and all the signals different protons will give a different signal this is one of the signals suppose this is the another signal okay this is the another signal so suppose these are the signal but uh, this is at one this is zero one two three four five Six, seven, eight. Now the the TMS, the signal due to this TMS, it comes at the right corner. Means here, this is the signal due to TMS, and that is taken as a zero. Okay, and this signal comes at the right corner, and the signal which is coming at the right corner, that is arbitrarily that uh, that uh, mark is given as a zero. Okay, so this is one of the reason because this is highly shielded in comparison to this. So this region is the shielded region in NMR spectra and this region and left region is called as the de-shielded region. So this is the uh, TMS uh, which is the most shielded. Otherwise very few exceptions are there where we also find we also find the uh, this uh, signal at minus also. Few exceptions we will discuss uh, in my other lectures next lecture maybe i will discuss about uh, that compound okay so this is these are the two uh, main thing or otherwise the next thing this tms is also inert one it will not react with the other compound tms is the inert inert and it is and it is visible and it is completely completely miscible with the solvent with the solvent used to record the nmr spectra okay so these are the uh, and one of the main uh, another reason may be that and because usually if we are recording any 
income spectra of uh, a sample and this sample is a very costly one and then we can also recover the sample uh, by evaporating this, uh, this TMS. So TMS is a volatile one and it can be evaporated and we can uh, we can recover the sample. So TMS is volatile one. TMS is volatile and so the sample can be recovered again. Sample can be recovered again. So this is the and that makes sense. So this is about the same uh, type of solvent and internal standard used in NMR spectra. Thank you.